Hutton Show, starring Betty Hutton. Brought to you by Post. And, Your Honor, this young, refined girl, having invested all her time, her energy, and her capital in the creation of a legitimate business enterprise, now finds herself faced with bankruptcy. Your Honor, all this innocent child asks for is a little time to settle the demands of her creditors. All she pleads for is a chance to save the only thing left in the world for her, the jungle nightclub. The court will grant a six months extension. Thank you. Is it over? I mean, did we win, sir? Yes, it's all over. You've got six months to raise the money. Oh, oh you go. You great big huge Bill, please. Now, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Come on, step right up, step right up. Well, kid, how did it go? Win, place, or show? Well, well, it was beautiful. We won. We've got six months to raise the money. Six months to raise the money. Now, I'll tell you what I... What? <laughs> we won. What? It's a good thing for us. There ain't no justice. <laughs> Just goes to prove my theory. There's nothing like a shrewd shyster. Oh, Mr. Seaton is no shyster. He's a gentleman. Do you know what that is? Yeah, it's some kook who won't come in and buy any of my cotton-picking dolls. Well, he's the lawyer for some of the richest families in New York. Why, why, he only took my case because, as you know, he understands shoe people. Are you kidding? <laughs> Nobody understands show people. Who well, Mr. Seaton does. He understands everything about everything. Oh, Al, I wish you could have seen him in the court the way he talked to the judge. But he was so extinguished. Dal, Dal, won't you ever learn? That's like being bumped off. No, the word is distinguished. There you go again, always throwing around your grammar school education. Why, I'll make you a bet. Mr. Seaton even finished high school. High school? Baby, don't you understand? These guys, they gotta go through college just to get to the bar. <laughs> well, that's a funny one. <laughs> oh, Al, I, I wish you could have seen him. I mean, the way he talked to me. He said the nicest things to me. Why, why he called me an innocent child. <laughs> now, who would have ever thought of that? You know something, Don? It sounds to me like this Mr. Seaton is getting a bad case of Beverlyitis. Baby Don, that gives me something of an idea. Uh-uh, Al. No, no. If this thing works out, we could very well end our financial dilemma. No, you don't. Not this time, Al. Why, Mr. Seaton did us a great big favor. Well, that's right, Beverly. And it is also right that we should do him a big favor. What do you mean, do him a big favor? What, like he said, you're an innocent child, and we got to protect an innocent child. What I'm trying to discuss is security, like stocks and bonds. Now, Mr. Seaton is loaded with them, and he has a great affection and respect for them. So, we shake him from some of that green, and we got the loot to keep the club open. But, but what makes you so sure he, he goes for me? Well, he's a male, ain't he? <laughs> hey, the papers you wanted, Mr. Seaton. Oh, good. That's fine. Thank you, Dora. Look, Mr. Seaton, aren't they beautiful? They just arrived. Oh, yes, very lovely. From your gentleman friend, I suppose. Oh, no, Mr. Seaton, they're not for me, they're for you. For me? Yes, yes, there's a card here. Go on, take the card. 
Read it. That's rather strange. I've never received roses before. Yes, it is. Rather unusual. <laughs> well, go on, read the card. Dear Dollface, <laughs> one for every hour since I saw you. How about dinner tonight, love? Beverly. Now, that's what I call a switch. You know something, Mr. Seaton? There must be a side to you that I know nothing about. Oh, no, 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 no. It's nothing like that, I assure you. Uh, it's um, uh, just an, an ex-show girl. I uh, defended in court, and uh, I suppose she's just trying to show her appreciation. Look, Mr. Seaton, I'm an ex-show girl, remember? Now, when they send roses, they are showing something besides appreciation. But Goldie, I assure you, it's nothing like that. Look, Mr. Seaton, you may be a very smart lawyer, but you got a lot to learn about showgirls. That's true. I don't know much about showgirls. After all, you're the only one I've ever known. But I do know this. A girl only 21, attractive, couldn't possibly be interested in a rather old man like me. Wait a minute, hold the phone. I know lots of showgirls, and they're always interested in older men. Don't sell yourself short. After all, you're tall, attractive, and very rich. Well, <laughs> bye. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Seaton, sweetie. <laughs> What have you got for me? Thank you, please! Oh, but, 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 I, I, I told you, I told you, Miss Bell, that there wouldn't be any But, Mr. Seaton, like I always say, there can't be a debt between friends. And I want to be your friend, your very dear, dear friend. Uh, Miss Bell, uh, would you, would you please? <laughs> would you please take a chair? But, honey, 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 I came to give you your money. <laughs> You have to roll, Mr. Seaton. Don't play so hard to get. You can't be oblivious to my obvious attributes. No, but I, I, I mean... Uh, Fight it. It's bigger than both of us. Bell, please stop. <laughs> I'm getting dizzy. Oh, stop let me it. give you some artificial respiration. So Miss Bell, oh. if you don't mind. But, Mr. Seaton, I want to give you something. When is your birthday? Do you remember? I am. Not if I can help it. What's wrong with you? Are you a Boy Scout leader? Or maybe, maybe you're married. Married? Oh, no. Yes, that's it. I'm married. Oh. I'm married. Very happily married. Married? After, after all those beautiful things you say about me today in court. But I meant them, my dear. I meant them. With being a happily married man and with his children. I'm sorry, but... Uh, if ever you get into trouble again, feel free to call on me. All right, Mr. Seaton. Bye. Ah! <laughs> ah! Oh, what am I going to tell Al? You know something, Mr. Seaton, sweetie? You must be nearsighted. <laughs> Oh, hello, Goldie. I just had to call you. I had a big fight with Nicky over borrowing on his allowance. Yeah, I got absolutely nowhere, so I made up my mind to, to let him go on his own. Work on his own problems. Do you think I did the right thing? You certainly did. Because something happened here a few moments ago that proves that very point. Really? What? Oh, uh... Certain Miss Beverly Bell walked in here and said that she couldn't live another moment without me. Coco, tell me more. She gave me a pretty rough time. She tried just about every trick in the book. I can imagine. How many laps? Very funny, Goldie, very funny. No matter, Goldie, I got rid of her. I did it all by myself. I uh, didn't involve anyone else in my problem. This I gotta hear. What did you do? Oh, quite simple. I told her I was married. You told Beverly Bell you were married? 
You know something, Mr. Seaton? You are out of your mind. Do you think now that you'll never see her again? Of course. I'm rid of her for good. <laughs> Sweetie, if you're such a happily married man, how come you got a button missing from your jacket? <laughs> hey, Mr. Seaton. Mr. Seaton? Yes? Who was that? Oh, nobody go to just another client of mine. Cuckoo. Maybe this time you'll get camellias. Why? <laughs> Sweetie, having dinner on Saturday night, all alone? Uh-oh, another button missing, and you told me you were married. <laughs> Mr. Seaton, I love you, and I'm young. Please don't do this to me. I am not doing anything to you. I can't. It's against the law. <laughs> I am married. I'm married. I'm married. Hi. Mr. Seaton, sweetie. Oh, no, not again. Will you keep your wife, Mr. Seaton, in a closet? Or maybe you don't have one. Hmm? No, go away. And miss the second act. <laughs> Look, Beverly, I can't stand this much longer. Neither can I. Give in. <laughs> hey, keep it quiet down there. I paid 15 bucks to see the show. And what do I get? John's other wife. <laughs> I told you I'm a happily married man. Happy, happy. I mentioned it several times, but she just doesn't believe me. Then we've got to find a way to make her believe it. That's like trying to move a mountain. Now look, Mr. Seaton, she might have a pretty good built, but she ain't no mountain. <laughs> Wait, I got it, I got it. It's so simple, it's perfect. Call Beverly, invite her over tomorrow night to your apartment at 8 o'clock. What a plan! Pat, listen to me good. Seaton's life may depend on it. Round up Nikki and Roy and meet me in Mr. Seaton's apartment. I'll tell you the scene then. And boy, you kids better play your parts of the hilt. I'm depending on you. Don't worry, Goldie. For you or Mr. Seaton, well, we'd do anything in the whole world. And besides, you know, since you came into our lives, the whole world's a stage and we're just three big hams. <laughs> okay, Goldie. Come, dancer, come, prancer. Keep playing, keep playing. Ladies and gentlemen, the first New York show of these dance, straight from our atomic laboratory.